Hello and welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And tonight I'm still feeling a bit under the weather, but determined to give you the news of the Royals and non-Royals too. We have the news of Gingerbread dragging Catherine into his legal mess. Princess Catherine received highly suspicious phone calls, Prince Harry tells Kurt. I have to ask this question. Whose legal battle is this? Why does Harry need to keep uh, dragging Catherine and William into these matters? Maybe he doesn't feel like he's got enough tractions of, or he already knows that his head, I mean, his case is full of hot air. Prince Harry has claimed that suspicious calls were made to mobile phones belonging to the Princess of Wales, Chelsea Davy, and Princess Diana's mother, Frances Chan Kidd, in his legal battle with Mirror, News, Mirror Group newspapers. In a witness statement, Submitted to the High Court, Harry List, 300, more than 300 highly suspicious calls made to his friends, family, and associates between 2003 and 2011. This included calls to Princess Kate and Prince Harry's ex-girlfriend, Chelsea Davy. Seven of the alleged calls were made to phones belonging to his then-girlfriend Davy between 2007 and 2009, and two were made to Catherine's phone in 2004 and 2010. And as to Rebecca High puts it, couldn't make this up. Traitorous Tom Prince, who makes millions of easy dollars selling private information, not least of all about his own family, uh, uses UK court system to expose others for allegedly doing exactly the same thing. Hypocritical twerp. And from the Times, tabloid newspaper stories about Duke of Sussex came from other members of the royal family. The High Court was told today. Prince Harry claims he was the victim of unlawful information gathering by the publisher of the Daily Mirror between 1995 and 2011. He says the king and his mother Diana, princess of Wales, were also targeted, as were former girlfriends, leading to huge bouts of depression and paranoia. Many came from information disclosed by or on behalf of royal households or members of the royal family, Green said in a written statement. One of the articles came from an on-the-record interview given by Howey. And amid the allegations of phone hacking while he was editor at The Mirror, Pierce Morgan told ITV News that it was Harry who should apologize for the royal family for the invasion of privacy he's been perpetrating. In his own words, all I'm going to say is I'm not going to take lectures of privacy invasion from Prince Harry, somebody who has spent the last three years ruthlessly and cynically invading the royal family's privacy for a vast commercial gain and told a pack of lies about them. So I suggest he gets out of court and apologizes to his family for the disgraceful invasion of privacy that he's been perpetrating. And you know that Harry had to play the victim card as well. Harry claims the alleged unlawful activities caused him huge distress and presented very real security concerns for not only me, but also everyone around me. Also created a huge amount of paranoia in his relationship, the court read. He said MGM journalists even managed to book into a hotel in Mazaruto, a small island off the coast of Mozambique, where Harry was staying with his then-girlfriend, Chelsea Davy. MGN's activities led Miss Davy to make the decision that a royal life was not for her, which was incredibly upsetting for Harry at the time, the court heard. Uh, you know what? Even with this strange call that has clouded my thinking a bit, I feel like this is nothing more than a smokescreen so Harry can, let's not say delete, because I don't think he can delete his words and actions, but he wants to rewrite part of the story. He is in desperate need of a narrative in which he is the one attacked. And I don't want to sound like the devil's advocate, but in some ways, it is the right thing to do. If someone invades your privacy, if someone distresses you with uh, their actions in this regard, uh, they should be punished. The problem with Harry's case is that A, his cases against these newspapers are paper thin, pun intended. B, it looks like he is trying to smear the royal family even more than the newspapers themselves. And C, most of the references to these acts, as published by the Times, come from none other than Omid Scooby. 
He claims he was given a list of mobile telephone numbers and a verbal description on how to listen to voicemails as if it were a routine news gathering technique. He also claims to recall that while on work, experienced on the Daily Mirror's 3 a.m. showbiz column, the newspaper's then editor, Pierce Morgan, asked how confident they were about a story relating to Kylie Minogue and her boyfriend, James Gooding, the court heard. He was told that the information had come from voicemails. You tell me about credibility now. Because, yes, it can be confusing with all the legal mumbo-jumbo, but the quid of this is that this editor, Pierce Morgan included, allegedly knew about the use of private investigators who use phone hacking to get these materials. As Trial Britannia puts it, this court case is just so Prince Harry can smear people who expose the lies told me by him and Meghan. He hates being held accountable for his own disgusting words and actions, so he's using other people's pain uh, to attack. Well, to be fair, there, there are references to Pierce Morgan himself uh, telling people how to hack into mobile voice messages to explain how the Daily Mirror obtained the story about the affair between the then England football manager Sven Goran Eriksson and the television presenter Ulrika Johnson. I'm sure all this will be developing in the following weeks. Now, I wanted to highlight J.E. May's nice analysis on the dynamics between Eduardo and Harry at the coronation. Edo wasn't feeling it. If you watch as they enter inside the abbey, Harry is near Edo and Beatrice as they approach the clergy waiting to greet them. In deference to Harry, who outranks Beatrice, Edo stood back to give Harry room to step toward the clergy. Edo then waited longer than was necessary for Harry to begin walking up the aisle to his chair. It was a smooth move. Edo, who has impeccable court manners, created space so that he and Beatrice were not grouped with Harry as they walked to, the, to their seats. Edo is always very respectful to Charles and senior royals at public events. I think he was very conscious of not wanting to appear to be on Harry's team. My rogue is, I still owe you the analysis of these pictures of Meghan. I sincerely don't have the stamina right now to detail the Duchess of Sausages, but I will take another look at them tomorrow. Meanwhile, it's worthy to highlight Jenny's comment on Twitter. I wonder if Meghan's sudden hiking photos had any connection to Catherine's abseiling down a cliff here in Wales not long before the coronation. Does wearing a lot of jewelry and hiking boots seem like abseiling down a cliff in the rain? Because this was back on April 27th. The Prince William, Prince of Wales and Catherine, Princess of Wales, visit the Central Beacons Mountain Rescue Team during a training exercise on the first day of their two-day visit to Wales. And speaking of Catherine's work, this reminds me of the baby banks she visited a couple weeks before the coronation as well. I understand this can be confusing in the sense that Catherine's baby banks are often confused with Meghan's bank babies. My wonderful 116,000 royal rogues plus the half a million who haven't subscribed yet. I love you all. Remember to like this video and the two most important words. Much love and bliss.